this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now this time we're going to be looking into the sixth episode of the Muppet Show, which features Nancy Walker. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with Nancy Walker, she is actually a prominent actress of stage and screen. But most notably, she is actually both an actress appearing from time to time and also a TV director for the show The Mary Tyler Moore Show, which she would even go on and her character that would appear in there would actually have her own spin-off series named Rodna. And this is all throughout the 70s with the Mary Tyler Moore Show. And even uh, Rhoda actually became so prominent and it actually went on for four years. So uh, she is actually a, uh, both a very funny and also a very talented woman. Now, going into the episode that she was in, it's actually very interesting to note that this would actually be the most consistent episode that they all kept it down to this entire one story where it has never happened before that a Muppet Show episode would really stick to the story and even have some of the sketches connect to what the story is going on. Now what's actually very interesting about this episode is that Kermit barely appears in here. In fact, he only appears until uh, the very end, like we only see him during that time there. And that is because he was pretty much sick throughout the entire thing, so he left it in the hands of Fozzie Bear. And the whole episode is about Fozzie trying to take control of the show while everything around him is pretty much going haywire where, um, yeah, I know that there's the usual Muppet zaniness, but it's not really that Fozzie can't handle that zaniness, it's that things were really going out of hand. The state, like, pretty much everywhere in the theater seems to be breaking apart, like one sketch made a hole uh, near the the booth where Sat Statler and Waldorf would sit, the audience almost left, and like all kinds of insanity ensues in that level where in terms of running a show, like things were just really falling apart. And it's really interesting how everything connects to each other. And usually with not just The Muppet Show, but with variety shows in general, they would just be about the individual sketches. They're not really, they're like, they're not really all a part of this one thing, but they're just their own separate entities. And while there are a few sketches in here that are their own thing, uh, the biggest thing is that some of them actually do connect to the plot line. Like when the show opened, like I said before, um, it caused a hole near the near the like uh, near like in, in somewhere in the audience. It caused a big hole, and that is because it started off with this uh, opening sketch where it's it's nothing really. It's not like a musical number or anything like that. It's more like a silent comedy bit where. Uh, like, like a bunch of kids are practicing with a cannon and to go and shoot the target, but Crazy Harry is just telling them to shoot wherever they want. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what caused the incident to have the hold there. And then there is another one, well, technically it doesn't necessarily count as a sketch, but there was, uh, an important part where suddenly, because there was nothing on stage, because Fozzie was just... Like, he didn't seem prepared with what he's doing. There was nothing on stage and the audience was about to leave. And then, what is actually, one of the more interesting bits in here is that Fozzie screwed up to where there are two sketches happening at the same time. There was an at the dance bit and there was also a veterinarian's hospital. Now, what pretty much happened is that it, the sketch itself kind of worked out pretty well in terms of like what a veterinarian's hospital is and what uh, an at the dance number is pretty much like it does manage to blend in together but some of the reactions more towards Miss Piggy and other characters like Floyd or Wolf that's what really sells this and um, like you can tell that like, they, they, they were pretty shaky with what they want to do, and, like, they don't know where the focus is, either in Veterinarian's Hospital or at the dance. But overall, as a sketch in itself, it actually did come out well. And, again, this added to another key element to how Fozzie is pretty much screwing things up as a host of the show, 
where pretty much he feels embarrassed over the fact that he brought in two sketches at the same time. And in terms of Nancy Walker, although she has her own individual sketches, including an opening comedy routine where she, where she's pretty much at this, um, so, I, I think it's like a fountain shop, is that what they call it? You know those old places where, like, you would go and buy a soda or, like, a root beer float or something like that? You, you know, those, those places, like, I, I don't know, do they still exist? Like, nowadays they're called Johnny Rockets, right? Uh, but a anyways, yeah, there's a sketch like that, there's, like, a comedy sketch like that where, like, things suddenly keep disappearing because Nancy Walker is sitting next to a monster that would literally eat anything uh, and then afterwards it was somewhere near the end where Nancy Walker would sing uh, they can't take away uh, they can't take that away from me like as a duet with Sweetums so that's more of your classic uh, variety vaudeville show routine uh, but there is one part that Nancy Walker did uh, interact with Fozzie and Kermit in terms of the story is that she would go and try to encourage him by singing Pick Yourself Up. And then there was another, like, more of a comedy routine where Nancy Walker would talk with Kermit over the phone to see how things are going. So, I there really isn't other anything else really to talk about, but... Actually, looking closely into the other sketches, now I do remember the other stuff that did happen. Uh, the ones that don't really connect with the other sketches or that don't really connect to, to what's going on with the episode, like, they're fine as they are. Uh, there's one called My Dear Old Dutch, which is sung by Bert and Rolf. And Bert apparently, like, I completely forgot, but he seems like one of the very minor recurring characters where if he need, if, if there's a song that's from, like, uh, the early 1900s or in the late 1800s, Bert would be the one singing it. Uh, and then there's another one, which is actually pretty cute. It, it's this very Muppet-like sketch where, like, you see all the birds singing, and, like, it, like, they're pretty much singing to this guy that's just reading his paper, and he has, like, this pet canary in a cage, and then you see all the other du uh, like, not, not just ducks, but, like, chickens and all kinds of birds, they're just singing in a medley. That one is a lot of fun, and it does have a great punchline at the end. And then there is also another one that, like, it's not that great, but it is cute, but... Uh, like, in the, if you recall in the last episode, the first, like, the first time we actually see Sam the Eagle is something called Sam's editorial, where he would come in and, like, would discuss about an issue. The first time we see him, he was just, like, he just come in and, like, he just announced, like, yeah, screw this, I quit. Uh, but then he came back discussing about nudity. It's not all that great, like, the, the punchline is pretty obvious, but overall, I guess it is cute mostly because of Sam's reaction, like, uh, at least in that regard, that that's pretty much what paid off with the sketch. Like that that's what that's what's able to give me a pass to it. So I would say overall, this is pretty much a very interesting episode and very fa and honestly probably one of the better episodes in terms of its structure where everything pretty much connects. This is all entirely about this one main plot where Fozzie has to be in charge. And on top of that, I forgot to mention how it's very interesting that we pretty much has, have this episode that's not driven by, that, that's not only not driven by Kermit, but that he's not there entirely. That everything, like even the episode itself, has to be in the hands of Fozzie. So every, like, all, like probably 75% of the sketches uh, uh, like, the backstory, and even the special guest's interaction with, uh, the Muppets, it all resolves onto this one plot, and it actually is a pretty interesting plot as well, and it fits very well to what the Muppet Show is doing, so, uh, I would say this is actually a pretty successful episode, and it really works out. And, um, honestly, for Muppet Show fans, this is one that would be interesting to check out, considering that this isn't just a, ver like, this isn't really, like, a variety episode. This actually feels like a concrete episode where, like, there's a story that happens. But anyways, that is pretty much it, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And let's see if we will see more episodes or just a variety on to the next episode of The Muppet Show. So I just want to say thank you guys for watching, and until next time, see you later, dudes!